Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box Corel harmonizations. Today we're looking at an interesting Corel. It's Es ist das Heil uns kommen her, which is a text that we've looked at in the past, but this particular harmonization is fascinating for sure. Uh, and it translates to salvation has come to us. Sorry for not doing it in my usual introductory order. We're just going to hop right into the analysis because there is a lot to talk about in this one. We have one flat in the key signature. We start off on F major. We end on F major. So I reckon we start in F major, but something to keep in mind is the fact that the melody with F major ideas happening uh, and E flat and the melody kind of has this effect of like mixolydian on the ear when you listen to it the first couple of times but when you get into the nitty-gritty it's actually not what's happening I mean I guess you could spin it in the angle that maybe there is some mixolydian ideation going on here but ultimately what's going on is that we're moving to the key of B flat because our first cadence is a deceptive cadence in the key of B flat. So we start off with our one chord passing tone in the tenor and then we get A, C, F, and C which is F major and first inversion. Just need to change the figured bass for that one. No need to reanalyze with Roman numeral. And then we get C, C, E, and C with a passing uh, seventh in the tenor that is like a, um, a C major triad without all, uh, without the fifth. So it's an incomplete triad, which would be implying a five chord. And then we go to F major again, F, A, F, and C. But with E flat happening on the fourth beat here, I think that a modulation is happening um, in and around this zone. So I'm going to call this uh, one chord also a five chord in the key of B flat because F is also the dominant of B flat. So it's a common chord modulation. We have a passing tone in the melody as well before we get C, G, G, and E flat. We might be tempted to call this a two chord, but I think this is actually another case where the two sort of happens at the same time as a seven chord A, C, G, and E flat, which is A minor seven flat five over C. And I definitely think that 5 goes to 2 more commonly than 5 goes to 7, but to be consistent with the fact that I've been calling these uh, 2 slash 7 chords that are only made different by one voice changing over the course of 8th notes, um, I typically ally with them being called 7-6 uh, chords, or I guess in this case 7-6-5, half diminished. And that goes to uh, D, 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 B flat, F, and D, which is our tonic triad. And that's the reason why I think that this is a seven chord rather than a two chord is because we have a tonic on the other side. Sometimes the two is preceded by its dominant, but in this case, we are diatonic here with our chord. So we have an interesting progression here of dominant functioning chord to dominant functioning chord to tonic, but kind of look at this chord as a means of getting to the key of B flat and then once we're in the key of B flat, this is sort of the start of a new arc of the progression. So I don't really look at this five going to seven as one continuous idea. Once the E flat is introduced, the harmony tells a different story, even though the melody kind of has this idea of mixolydian based on the way the E flat's introduced, just the way it sounds to me. But we have a passing tone in the bass here. Then we have F, A, F, and C with a passing seventh in the alto that is F major, which is our five chord, and then we get our deceptive cadence, G minor, G, B flat, D, and B flat, which is our submediant. Uh, that is probably the most interesting part of the Corel, um, as far as the harmony is concerned. I think the fact that Bach modulates as often as he does in this Corel is also another interesting point, uh, because the next phrase ends in a perfect authentic cadence in the key of C, but instead of going directly from B flat to C, which would be interesting because they don't have too many chords in common you could do it over um, like D minor for example but uh, we go through F major which makes a little bit more sense as we are traversing the circle of fifths clockwise by removing flats from the key so this six chord G minor is now our two in the key of F major and that goes to C major E G C and C which is our dominant and first inversion passing seventh in the melody before we get F, F, C, 
and A, which is our tonic. So we have a 2, 5, 1 here that elides with the 6 at the end of our deceptive progression. Very cool. Then we have some passing tones in the melody and the tenor before we get F, A, C, and F. It's another tonic triad in root position. No need to reanalyze. Some more passing tones in the uh, tenor and the melody as well before we get yet again another F major triad in root position, F, C, F, and A with a passing seventh in the bass. And this A is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. We then have D, D, uh, G, and B. Now this B natural probably indicates to us that we've modulated on the beat before, so I think this F chord actually is functioning in the key of C major as our subdominant, as this G major triad here is probably functioning as our dominant in the key of C. So we're going to call this F chord 4 now, and then we get G major over D, not over B. Uh, which would be 5, 6, 4. And this would be a passing 6, 4 chord, part of a longer passing figure that goes over the bar line, but still, it is how it is. We have D, D, G, and B. Uh, the passing 7th as well also kind of makes this feel like a 4, 3 chord, so it's less like a, like a stern, just stoic standing there 6, 4 chord, which we see um, relatively uncommonly, most commonly in cadential situations as far as Bach is concerned. But this 5-6-4 chord goes down to 1 C major, C, G, E, and C, which is our tonic triad. This F is a non-chord tone, this D is a non-chord tone, this C is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. Next beat we have G, C, G, and D. This B, of course, being the chord tone, this C being a 4-3 suspension over the bass. A G major triad is being implied here, so this is just a 5 chord. This F is sort of a delayed passing 7th here before we cadence on C major, C, C, E, and C, which is our tonic triad again, a 1-5-1 one, one cadence, pretty straightforward. Um, moving into the B section, we have another phrase that concludes with a perfect authentic cadence in the key of C. Uh, we start off with F major, F, A, F, and C, which is a 4 chord. I don't think we've modulated back to the key of F, even though C going to F is a 5-1 progression in the key of F. It's sort of like how we've started every phrase in the key of F. I don't think we've fully modulated, but we do have the idea of F being in the, in the, in the ear. Uh, but after these passing tones, in, or the passing seventh and the bass and the passing tone in the alto, we have D, A, A, and F. And we could call that a two chord, but again, similar to this seven, six, five chord, I think this A is an accent and non chord tone. It's this B that is our target or our chord tone. We have B, D, A, and F. Another one of these seven, six, five chords, which makes me feel like this seven, six, five chord is, uh, is more than just. Uh, a one-time thing kind of strengthens that analysis a bit. This would be a B minor 7 flat 5 chord over D, um, so 7, 6, 5, and it's relatively uncommon for us to see 7, 7 chords in this configuration. Usually they're 7 uh, triads, um, so it's interesting that they occur twice. The Bach is recycling that chord progression over two different keys, once in B flat and once in C major. Pretty cool. And then we get C major in root, uh, first inversion, E, C, G, and E, which is our tonic triad in first inversion. So we have a 4-7-1 progression here. I think that's what was being implied. We have a passing tone in the bass before we get G, B flat, or sorry, B natural. I was about to be, be like, wait, B flat there. No, the B natural carries over. G, B natural, G, and D, which is our dominant triad, G major passing tone in the tenor, passing seventh of the alto, before we get C major in root position, C, G, E, and E, which is our tonic triad, passing seventh in the bass. This G is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it, and then we are closing in on our cadence. We have A, F, C, and F. That is F major in first inversion, which is 4, 6, and then we have four voices moving in off of the harmonic rhythm, which typically means that there's a progression going on, but in this case it's not really one chord going to another, it's one chord then being revoiced. We have a four chord in first inversion, then we have F, C, A, and E natural, which would be like taking our four chord, putting in root position, and then adding a seventh, so this is just an F major seven chord. So we don't need to reiterate the Roman numeral, we'll just change the figure base to imply that it is a seven chord that is in root position, so seven, five, three, that's what that means. And this uh, E would be a passing tone if that were the case. 
The other notes are chord tones. We then have G, B natural, D, and D. This G is another chord tone. That's G major in root position, which is our five chord. And then we cadence on C major, C, C, E, and C, similar to our first phrase, or sorry, our second phrase, concluding with a tonic triad with no fifth. We have a uh, actually the exact same spelling. All the notes are the exact same. Okay, looking ahead, we have a half cadence in the key of G minor. So how are we going to get from the key of C major to the key of G minor? We're going to do so through the key of F. Notice how we have B flats happening immediately afterwards. This C is going to turn into our five chord in the key of F major. We then have F, A, F, and C. It's fitting because five is going to one. This is an F major chord. We have some passing tones in the inner voices before we get F, C, A, and F, which is another F major triad, so we do not need to reanalyze it. We then have a neighbor tone in the alto and a passing tone in the bass before we get A, F, A, and C, which is F major in first inversion, so we just need to change the figured bass there. Passing seventh in the tenor, passing tone in the alto before we get B flat, D, F, and D which is B flat major in root position. That is a four chord. That is our subdominant with the passing tone and the bass. And then we get D, D, F, and A. Now we could call this a D minor chord, which in the key of F major would be a six chord, but I think this A might be considered an accented non-chord tone. And we're getting B flat major in first inversion because this B flat is what chord tone I view this as. Um, or I view this B flat as the chord tone that's happening here. Ultimately, the six and the four, they're achieving the same thing. They're very similar chords. The difference is A versus B flat. Otherwise, all of their notes are the same. So their functions are very similar and it would be considered more of like a static progression where we have two chords that are going from one to the other without really introducing a lot of notes to the texture, like a chord progression that went from one chord to an adjacent wood or a chord that went from one to like a fourth above it would. Um, but that being said, we have E, G, E, and C. That's C major in first inversion, which in the key of F, which would be, uh, that would be five, six. Uh, but in the key of G minor, it would also be four, six. And Bach has been known to modulate over the major four of the harmonic scale. He uses the major four uh, spelling of the subdominant in minor keys all of the time. Uh, he often omits that third, or I don't mean to suggest third, but he omits that additional flat from the key signature because the harmonic minor uh, is just something that is uh, very commonplace in his music, so the key signature doesn't need to reflect it. But that being said, I think this is where we modulate. We could make the argument that this four chord is where we modulate, and this is our three which then goes to four, but somewhere in this zone, somewhere over the course of these three beats, a modulation occurs via a common chord. And when we have a four, six chord connected to a tonic, which is happening on the next beat, we always have this leading tone that connects the two chords in the bass if it's ascending. In this case, we have two passing tones, which gives us F sharp, A, E, and C, which is F sharp minor seven flat five, in root position, that's a 7-7 seven, seven chord in the key of G minor, 4-6 going to 7, that's a good sign, that's a normative chord progression that follows um, this predominant dominant tonic principle of tonal harmony, right? Uh, here we have G, B flat, D, and B flat at the end of it too, which is our tonic triad. Then we have some passing tones in the inner voices before we get D major, D, D, F sharp, and A, making this a 5 chord, uh, typically five, uh, 5 chords or half cadences, um, specifically, usually, most cases end with a five in the melody as well. The majority of them do. Not always, but the majority of them do, uh, because that uh, upper voice is going to eventually resolve downwards by step if it continues in that key. But one of the more interesting aspects of this chorale is I believe that we have a direct modulation happening here to the key of F to prepare us for our perfect authentic cadence in the key of F major at the end. Even though F is a common key or a common chord, A, C, F, and A, which I'm calling 1-6 in the key of F major, you could call this 7-6 in the key of G minor as well. It does not feel like a common chord modulation between the two of them, though. With the cross relations between the F sharp and the F natural, this is what really makes the chord progression feel 
much more separate like two to it like it's been cleaved in two like this is a separate idea from what has preceded it which has been a very flowy chorale that's consisted of a lot of common chords and modulating between keys using those common chords this seems like a very um jagged uh angular separation from the previous length of chorale that's uh, happened since the beginning of its uh, since the beginning of the movement so it's interesting that we're getting a uh, direct modulation here that's at least the way that i hear it and it's because of the dichotomy of f sharp and f natural this false relation we have a passing tone in the bass and then we have c c e and g that is our dominant c major a5 chord and then we have a passing tone in the melody before we get d f d and b flat that is b flat major in first inversion five going to four six it's like a deceptive progression because we have five going to six in the bass we have some passing tones in the um, uh, lower voices as well and when we have four six going to one right f a c and a that's our tonic triad we always have this leading tone connecting the six going to the one um, and sometimes we have a fully voiced seven chord or a five chord but more cases than not it's a seven chord in this case we have e g d and b flat which is e minor seven flat five and root position we've seen this progression a couple of times now uh, we've seen it once before in the previous phrase four six going to seven seven we have some passing tones in the inner voices this time as well, following this tonic triad. And then we have E, C, E, and G, which is our dominant triad, C major in first inversion. That's 5, 6. We have some passing tones in the lower voices before we get G, B flat, D, and D. Very interestingly here, we get a G minor triad in root position. Typically, we would expect it in first inversion because Bach loves two 6 chords and two 6, 5 chords. But no, we have a root position um, two chord, which is, you know, nothing wrong with it. It's just unusual. Uh, and then we have this interesting just leap in the base of a series of consecutive fifths, C going down, sorry, G going down to C and C going down to F. The span of a ninth in the base is a very large, uh, uh, just span of range for the bass that's going on here. It's very interesting. But this two chord has a passing tone in the tenor before we get C, G, C, and E which is our dominant triad C major with the passing seventh in the alto. And then we cadence on, you guessed it, F major, F, F, A, and F. Bach having made his perfect authentic cadences, all of them consist of three root, one third voicings, which is kind of interesting. Maybe there was some intention there, but it's a very fascinating chorale. Um, very beautiful chorale. This is m probably like... My, my retention, to be honest with you, as far as memorizing these, uh, memori memorizing, as far as memorizing the chorales are concerned, because I'm analyzing them so quickly, and I'm only spending a day with them, um, about 10, after 10 days of chorales, I've kind of forgotten, uh, anything that isn't like a lasting trend like the things that i continue to mention in my videos unless there's something that triggers a memory uh, but this is probably my the most beautiful chorale that i've heard in um the last 10 days or so so in this length of time it's really interesting to hear this chorale because it has a lot it's a very uh um, diverse chorale lots of variety harmonically um, no secondary dominance, but at the same time, we get a lot of harmonic movement through modulation, and uh, the voices do a lot of interesting things rhythmically too. We have almost like a swing pattern going on here. Swing's not a dotted rhythm, it's a triplet rhythm, but still, dun, da dun, da da It's a very interesting thing to hear uh, Bach do. Not that this rhythm is foreign to him or anything, but it's not one that we often see in the chorales, so it's uh, interesting to hear. But I think I'm just going to cap the video off on that one. This is a very fascinating chorale, very beautiful chorale, one that's uh, one that I'm fond of after having listened to it so many times today. If you're interested in following me along on this journey to analyze all of the chorale harmonizations, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so you can be notified of when my daily video goes live. I have tons of videos scheduled for the future, so if you want your daily fix of Bach, or your daily dose of analysis, or both, you are in the right place, and I would be more than happy to have you along for the journey. Uh, but that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for supporting the channel by doing so. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.